Good morning, good afternoon. Hey, Rosa hi. Montero. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hi. Um, How are you? You're here to talk about your novels as a, one of the most famous Spanish writers. Can I say that? Yes, you can I can. Say, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but here, right here and right now, you're here as a reader mm -hmm, yeah. with a book you brought with you. Yeah, we are all, all the writers, we are on the first moment, we are readers, we mm -hmm. are readers that write. But we love reading, of course. Are you a reader who writes or a writer who reads? <laughs> no, I think that we are first, we are readers, and we are readers that write. Because yeah. uh, uh, there is a writer, uh, an Spanish writer, that is um, the, uh, uh, that he she made a, a, a book about um, writing, mm -hmm. and she asked uh, to the writers uh, something very difficult. She said, "If uh, so, uh, it uh, happens a catastrophe, and you have to choose uh, between not to write anymore or not to read anymore, what do you choose?" It's like and choosing between being deaf or blind. That's the, that's the point, because yeah. uh, I think that most of the writers, we think, we feel that if we don't write, we get mad, we get destroyed, you mm -hmm. know, most of us. And uh, I have been asking this to many, many writers through the world, you know, I mean, in the last uh, 15 uh, years or something like that. Maybe I, I have asked that to 300 people. And all of them, but two, we, because I have said that too, we have, cho cho we have chosen to keep on reading. Because if you, if you stop writing, maybe you will get mad. But if you stop reading, you just die. Because it's like not having oxygen, you see? Like living in Mars. Mm -hmm. But so, you are one out of two people? No, I have, a, I have chosen to read too. And to read. To read. Okay. And all the, all the, all only the other authors. All, 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 the, all the rest. Oh, wow. But two people have chosen to read. All of mm -hmm. them. And from these two people, one of them, I, I didn't believe him. I thought, <laughs> I think that he was. He was trying to impress you. Snob. Yeah. yeah. Snob, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm a, I'm a writer. I'm a writer. And the other one, I believe him because he was so weird. The poor thing that I can understand that without. Right, and he couldn't live. You yeah. know? But uh, you see, it is most most of us, we are readers. Yeah, you are readers. Yeah. You brought the book, the book by Nabokov. Yeah, that's uh, 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 it's one of my masters, so to say. It's a late master because I began to write as, as most novelists uh, since uh, I was a child. My first short stories I wrote then when I was five years old, and they mm -hmm. were from. Uh, about mice, small mice, mm -hmm. who, who talk, and uh, and then I began to publish uh, when I was 29. Do, do you still have them? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I have them. You keep them somewhere? Uh, my, my, my mother uh, took them and then uh -huh. she she baked them. That's yeah. why I know that I had, uh, I was uh, five years old and I have them at home. Yeah. They are awful. So if one, if, if one day the complete works, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> they are just... Uh, Playful things, you yeah. know, and that with the uh, with the uh, drawings of mice also and all that, yeah. Well, and uh, I I have been writing all my life, and then I began uh, publishing when I was 28 years old, and uh, I met Nabokov and Lolita later. I have been published all uh, 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 two novels when I read him the first time, Lolita, but. Yeah, I think that he's a master for me, not not a master from my first uh, epoch. <laughs> from mm -hmm. my, so you had already written. Yes, I have already written, and I and have a style, and yeah. I have. I was searching for my style and all that, but then what I what I found in Nabokov was that he made in a sublime level all the things that I was trying to to get. You see, the, the, the playfulness of it, uh, with the language and uh, the, the structure of the novel, because he writes uh, Tom Lee, uh, uh, do you know? Uh, he writes these kind of novels that when you finish them, you have to uh, rethink them to understand what you have read, because he is always doing 
um, uh, mm, tricks to the reader. Mm -hmm. So you have to reread the novel. We read, no, we read the, rethink in the yeah. in the hack. And then you fact. find new things. Yes, new because insights. because he is like a like a magician, and he makes you believe things that they are not real, even if he puts in the novel all the things, you know. But he is such a magician that he he uh, I don't know he he gets you to to understand the opposite that he is writing. Yeah. <laughs> and he's superb. And then this mixture of uh, cruelty and tenderness, and then this uh, feeling of life like a paradoxical thing, uh, and uh, the contradiction that there is in, in, in life, you know, and, uh, the mixture between uh, beauty and cruelty and horror and the mixture between uh, love and, 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 and hate and love and, and pain. You know, you, as Oscar Wilde said, you kill what you love. You know? And then uh, uh, Nabokov uh, talked uh, about that. And yeah. the thing that the time makes us, the passing of time makes us, uh, the time and death us. Yeah? And, and this, all these subjects are very, very mine, very yeah. mine, but he writes about that in a way sublime, as I said. It is the most uh, wonderful, one of the most wonderful writers of 20th century. He was a very unbearable person, I, I think, but a wonderful person. <laughs> yeah, he was. You think he was a wonderful uh, person? Or? Uh, oh, no, unbearable. No. Okay, unbearable, unbearable that yeah. person. But yeah. well, it seems that he was so. He believed uh, he was all the time uh, thinking that uh, people uh, didn't pay attention to him, uh, enough attention, and, and, and on all that. And he was very ego egotistic, and he was. That good, good thing nobody's perfect. <laughs> Okay, could you give us an example? Yes, and, uh, well, what just... Are you, what are you going to read? Uh, just the beginning, because it's a okay. gorgeous book, so I just read the beginning. Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, my sin, my soul. Lolita. The tip of the tongue taking a trip of three steps down the palate to tap a flea on the teeth. Lolita. She was low, playing low in the morning, standing four feet ten in one sock. She was low large in slacks. She was dolly at the school. She was Dolores on the dotted line. But in my arms, she was always Lolita. Did she have a precursor? She did. Indeed, she did. In point of fact, there might have been no Lolita at all had I not not loved one summer a certain initial girl child in a princedom by the sea. Oh, when? About as many years before Lolita was born as my age was that summer. You can always count on a murderer for a fancy prose style. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, exhibit number one is what the seraphs, the misinformed Simple, never winched seraphs envied. Look at this tangle of thorns. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful book. <laughs> I do recommend the reader. <laughs> the yeah, reader. In, in, in just a few sentences, a whole world. Yeah, opens up. yeah. Well, the, the, just the beginning. This, this Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, is one of the of the classical beginnings of books of all the history of literature and is <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, certainly it's a, it's a book so complex, so sophisticated, so terrible and he, he uh, as you know, uh, Humber Humber, the, 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 the narrator and, and main character is, uh, is an intellectual of 42 years old and he's a very cultivated person and all that and he falls in love. It has um, another thing that I love in my writing and in his writing, this mixture uh, between the, the humor, is, he's, he's very witty and very, and the, the horror, you know, it's spooky at the same time and witty. And uh, this uh, Humber Humber uh, falls in love with a girl of 12 years old. And he tries to be 
uh, near her. He tries to marry her mother and to kill her mother. The mother dies by herself. And then there is the, the, this book with this man that uh, is the father you know, of the, this child. And for two years, they go from motel to motel in, a, in escape, in escape. And uh, you see all that, and you see how, how horrible things, horrible things that he is doing to this child. But as a reader, you feel sympathetic with the Humber Humber because he loves so much this girl, and this girl is so stupid. She, she only knows how to chew, chew, chew and gum and all that. And in the last 30 pages or 20 pages, Nabokov gives a tour, makes a round, and then shows you that uh, the girl was not a stupid at all, of course, was just a, a huge victim of this pedophile, pederasta, I, I don't know how do you say, pedophile. And uh, the, the, the terrible things that he was doing to him, and then you feel, as a, as a reader, you feel absolutely like coming out from a dream, because this man, even if he was saying everything, he managed to uh, to make you feel near the torturer, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's superb. I don't know if I have explained myself, have I? Yes, 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 yes you did. At, at yeah. what age did you first read the book? Uh, well, I have already published two books. I think I was 31, 31, yeah. After that, 31? I read, yeah. Yeah, okay. Is it... Um, Different for, for a woman, you think, or for a man to read the book? I don't think yeah. so. No, I don't think so. I think that no is influence. like all books, uh, all books uh, that go very deep in the human condition. Uh, human condition, you know, on the on the Western society, human condition is is very near. It's not the same uh, in a in a society like Taliban societies. If a, there, are we, women cannot go to the streets uh, alone, cannot go with the face, uh, cannot work, cannot study. Well, the world in which they live and the world that they see is very different from the men, and then the reality makes a difference. But uh, for us, uh, and, and for the men also, uh, indeed, but uh, for us in a Western, Western society, I'm not saying that we don't live uh, sexism here a lot, but uh, but the, the difference is not so uh, so strong as to 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 lose uh, the, this feeling, uh, essential common feeling of of humanity that we share. Yeah. Also, when you're reading a book, you're looking for a common feeling, some sort of recognition. Is yeah. that, is that do you make a connection to the main character? Absolutely. Character? We all make it. That's why it's so important, this book, because in, in, you make uh, men and, and women, we make a connection with, with this um, search of love, of pure love, of pure... Um, he, is, he shows himself during the, the book like someone who is doing, he, he is giving his life to this girl. But in, 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 in fact, he's taking <laughs> the life of this girl off, you know? But uh, he feels like uh, he's giving his life for her. No? This uh, um, side, this uh, poisonous side of love, this tragic side of love to this, uh, you know, this uh, toxic, Side of, very toxic side yeah. of love, you know. There's but a sense of danger there. Yeah, absolutely. Very uh, uh, at yes, same yes, time. yes. And this is something so basic in, in, in human beings on the other on the other side. So it's very, very yeah. It's like in the in the in the books by Patricia Highsmith. Mm -hmm. I love Patricia Highsmith. She's a gorgeous writer and she is one of the she tames our demons are, you know. And you read Patricia Highsmith, and you feel near the killer. You don't want the killer to be caught by the police. <laughs> you feel a strong sympathy with the devil. 
We're here with tequila, yeah. I'm looking at you with different eyes now. <laughs> I'm so good, that's why I'm so, such a good person. That, that, that's why I need to, to be in contact with that to know the complexity of life. Yeah. <laughs> you see. Yeah. <coughs> You're going to talk about uh, La Ridicula Idea de No Volver a Verte. Yes, now uh, we know. The Absurde Idee van Je Nooit Meer Te Zien is a, mm -hmm. a novel you, you've written in 2013. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's a it's a it's a strange book. I don't know if it is a novel or what. It's one of these uh, hybrid books, a mix-up book. Is uh, it's an essay, but it's not an essay. It's a biography uh, around Marie Curie, but it's not a biography at all. It's uh, an autobiography, but it's not an autobiography at all. And then I talk about stories. So it's a mess. I, I don't know, it's, it's a mix. Yeah, there's a lot to say about it. Yeah. Well, you get one hour at uh, yes, 3 o'clock yes. with the Catamates in, uh, in the Cavies. Yes, that's right. Well, thank you, Rosanna Thank Pera. you, thank you. Thank you.